Today I have the genuine pleasure of speaking with Guy Barassa of Namaska Lithium. How are you today, Guy? Very good about you. I'm fantastic, and I'm just delighted to have this opportunity to talk to you about the overall lithium market. I'd love to start with you right now about, you know, right now Jack Lipton is telling me that we have a bull lithium market. In fact, all my editors are John Peterson, uh, you know, uh, Christopher Ecclestone. They're saying we've got another five years of intense demand and rising prices for lithium. Do you agree with this, uh, Guy, or uh, what's your anticipation? Absolutely, I do agree with this. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm sure that they also noted that the only commodity uh, in the mining sector in the past four or five years that have been uh, seeing an increase in demand and an increase in sales price is lithium, the li different lithium compounds. So yes, I do. Uh, and what I hear from the Chinese market and the producers around the world and uh, market analysis is that effectively there's a very, very big shortage actually that is reflected by the spot price that we see in China, that we've seen for the past three, four months. Some people are talking about even $15,000 US for lithium carbonate on spot price. Of course, spot price does not represent the, the, uh, the, uh, the real contracts, long-term contracts, but this definitively shows that somebody is looking desperately for lithium carbonate at this time and that there is none. Obviously, that is uh, a lot of exciting news for us at Investor Intel and our audience. And of course, Jack Lifton is telling me the real driver for the battery market is actually China. And of course, Namaska Lithium has made this, you know, one of a kind deal with Johnson Matthews. So I, I believe and perceive you to be an expert in understanding the demand for batteries, you know, right now. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that demand really is or, or help us help enlighten us a little bit more, Guy? Uh, I, I don't quite agree with Jack uh, about the fact that the market is in China. Production increases in China, but their their batteries and cathode material is is going outside in uh, in other markets. So they're producing these batteries, but the the end users are not absolutely not presently in China. That's maybe going to be growing there, but it's already growing in Europe. It's already growing in the United States. The electric vehicle. But what's even more interesting? Because if people don't believe of the rapid growth uh, and the adoption of the electric vehicles, they have to take into consideration that uh, on a tonnage wise, energy storage is much more important than the electric vehicle adoption. And you're going to see at least two times the number of tons of lithium compounds required for the energy storage sector. So uh, it's less sexy, I suppose, than electric vehicles, but uh, as a manufacturer, I absolutely delighted with the uh, with the the rise in the demand for energy storage. Okay, so would you say that you agree with? We had a a speaker at our last technology metal summit say that uh, the stake is really in renewable energy storage, solar and wind, not in the uh, car industry. Would you agree with that? Yes, exactly what I uh, it's exactly what I was saying earlier. You have about two times the number of tons projected in the, the increased demand coming from the energy storage than from the EV. Of course, the EV, starting from a, a lower number, shows a, a more important percentage growth. But then a tonnage-wise, it's almost two times more demand coming from the energy storage sector. So yes, I fully agree with this. Well, this is my favorite question I have for you, Guy, because uh, we have so many people talking about the lithium industry and, and battery storage, and, I, I, and obviously they're new to the market. Can you tell us what the biggest misconception you hear about lithium is presently? Oh, the biggest misconception is about the, the fact that everybody believes that it's easy to get lithium, that there's no uh, scarcity of resource. There is a lot of lithium. Everybody talks about Bolivia, but Bolivia the, never produced one kilo of, uh, of commercial lithium because of technical issues, because of political issues, because of all sorts of difficulties. So having a resource potential is something. Having a reserve that you can mine economically and get to the proper uh, purity level, that's something else. So if it was that easy, why would there only be three projects presently around the world that are fully permitted, ready to build? One, one in Australia, one in Canada, and one in Argentina. So there's a very, very few projects out there. Even if the three projects were coming to in production this year, that would not be able to supply the increased projected demand. 
So there is room for new projects. There is very, very few projects that are out there, and we're one of them. Well, Guy, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your thoughts on the lithium market. Thank you very much. Well, it was my pleasure.